Hello, my name is Ellie Rhodes and I am, well, I was part of the marketing departments in the games industry. So I am from video games and I'm here today to talk with Made of Millions about how video games have had an impact on my mental health support and my life over the last however many years. Um, so for those of you that are new here, those of you that don't know me, uh, those of you that don't know the charity, uh, Made of Millions is a non-profit mental health advocacy and everyone that is involved with Made of Millions is basically there to try to increase awareness of mental health and make uh, change the way that mental health is perceived in the world, in the workplace, just in general, remove that whole taboo uh, for the mental health subject in general. Um, so you can check them out on madeofmillions.com. Uh, they have a YouTube channel. There is regular scheduling for various different awesome people who are all giving talks uh, like me about their own little um, individual experiences with uh, coping with mental health and mental illness. Um, so a little bit of background on me. I essentially was diagnosed uh, with severe anxiety and depression um, last year, having suffered with symptoms for the last kind of decade or so. Um, essentially, I've been having panic attacks since I was about 12 years old, um, but I didn't know that they were panic attacks at that time. Uh, so I have had various different levels of panic attacks and anxiety. I've suffered on and off with depression since I was about 15, 16 years old. And um, I've had all the different range of symptoms that have come alongside that. And last year, I had such a downturn with my mental health that I, I sought out professional medical help. And it was the best thing I ever did, quite honestly. Um, it was liberating. Um, I'm now taking medication to help me get through uh, just day-to-day -day life, but I'm gradually tapering that down. And I have a whole ream of different techniques and coping mechanisms that I used before that, that I have continued uh, to do since going on the medication. Um, so in general, I've been doing the the usual practicing breathing techniques for panic attacks and anxiety attacks. Um, I've been eating cleaner and eating healthier. I've been exercising and doing things like yoga, just gentle exercise, getting outside. Um, my dog has been an absolute godsend, as has my husband. Um, and last year, when I decided to go on medication for the first time, I also started therapy and through that discovered self-compassion and practicing self-compassion um, methods to help with my general well-being. <laughs> um, so one of the other huge things, which is what I'm here to talk about today, is how gaming has had an impact on my mental health and my stability over the last 10, 15 years or so. Um, so I, I generally, when I have these, uh, I call them spirals. Um, my therapist would not be pleased with me saying that, um, but they are, they are my spirals where I, I tend to go downhill very quickly. And when I feel these things coming on, I generally turn to gaming to help me out with that because gaming has always provided this kind of escapism for me. It's getting into another world, another person, another setting. It's something that is not my life that I can throw my all into and I become so invested in these characters and these these stories. And I know that that provides help for a lot of different people. Um, so I, when I do have these, these spirals and these downturns, I tend to become withdrawn. I stop communicating with people. I lose interest in a lot of things, but gaming has always helped me get through that and move past that and it provides just that little pocket of um isolation where i can sort through my thoughts and i can distract myself for a little while and get over whatever it is this funk that i'm in and it generally helps with those beginnings of the spirals um so uh I don't really know where to go from here. I started in the games industry because my passion 
for games and everything that games did to help me, um, I wanted to pass that on to a lot of people. I wanted to project that same kind of comfort that I get from games outwards and help other people with that. And kind of an offshoot of that then uh, got me into video games marketing. Um, and essentially I decided to do this when I was around 17 years old. I did not know that this was a career that I could have. I didn't realize when going through school that I could I could do video games as, as a job. Um, so when I was about 18, I decided to essentially work my ass off to try and break into the games industry. And since then I've uh, received various different uh, recognition from uh, people within the games industry, industry professionals, who have kind of cherry picked me for different roles, some voluntary, uh, some contracted freelance, and then I was offered my first full-time position around four years ago now. And since then I've, I've moved from studio to studio, country to country. I'm now living in the United States uh, with my husband after moving from Canada. As you can tell, I'm not from either of these places. I am from the UK. And yeah, it's been a lot of, it's kind of gone from, from strength to strength within the industry. Um, I've taken a little bit of a break recently because as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, the games industry is very intense. There is a lot of uh, talk right now about crunch and burnout associated with crunch and how that can negatively affect staff and as a consequence negatively affect game development. Um, long story short, I did two campaigns back to back and I decided upon moving to the States that I was gonna take a little break and focus more on my mental health, get myself into a place where I'm happier and I'm stable and I'm comfortable. And that has led me to streaming, which is the big kind of topic for today. So for those of you that are not familiar with video games or uh, familiar with Twitch, uh, Twitch is a an online uh, service where people can stream video games for others to watch. And um, some of you may be aware that Twitch does have a bit of a bad rep with people outside of the games industry for being quite a toxic platform that enables various different people to, um, let's say, engage in fantasies. There is this negative connotation that comes with gaming right now, uh, but I have found Twitch to be hugely beneficial and the community that I have um, cultivated and uh, looked after and grown on Twitch has been massively, massively beneficial to my mental health. And I've found that for a lot of people as well. Um, so it's, it's difficult to say why I got started with streaming. Um, essentially, I wanted to play games online. I wanted to, again, share that passion that I have for video games with people. And the best way to do that was with Twitch and people seemed to enjoy it. So I carried on doing it. And that was, what are we on now, 18 months ago? And it's going just onwards and upwards. I'm now streaming full time, which was quite a big leap coming from a full time nine to five job to a make your own schedule, make your own rules, do your own thing kind of position with Twitch it's been kind of eye-opening, let's say, uh, but the community that I have managed to grow on Twitch has been incredibly supportive, incredibly wholesome, and just generally uh, wonderfully beneficial to my mental health. So this is a side that people don't tend to see when they think about Twitch, they think of the um, video games are an addiction, video games cause shootings, like, you know, that kind of side of things. But that is such a tiny, tiny percentage that people tend to overlook the benefits to gaming and live streaming. Um, so it's, I should probably go into why my community and the communities that I have joined on Twitch are 
so helpful and so wholesome. And essentially what I, what I seem to have found is that the smaller communities, everyone knows everyone. Um, I can see all of my, my beautiful community in the chat right now, uh, asking questions and saying hello. Um, everybody knows everyone and you have these personal connections with people that you don't tend to get in the bigger Twitch communities. And as a consequence, you then join up with these other little pockets of people through mutual friends, mutual viewers, things like that. And you end up having this really supportive, encouraging, um, inclusive series of communities that everybody feels like they belong to. You feel like you're welcome. You feel like you are valued and a part of this community. It's not, you're not just a name in a chat that's moving at a thousand miles a minute. Um, and my community has essentially grown from the four or five people that started watching me to a steady thousand or so people that tune into each stream. And one thing that strikes me every time new people arrive is that they say that I've never been in a community before where the streamer engages with the chat and everybody feels like they're being really friendly and welcoming. And off the back of that, we then have a, a Discord channel, which is uh, for anyone who wants to partake in community activities outside of the stream. Um, and that in itself has become a very, very wholesome, very safe space, very inclusive space for everyone. And it's been quite, uh, quite a shock to the system, I guess, running that and having that available because it's, um, it's, it's difficult to uh, moderate something like a Discord. So it's, it's essentially a uh, messaging server. And we found that very early on in the Discord, because of the kind of people that we have in our community, uh, we have lots of LGBTQ people in the community, people identifying as various different sexualities and genders. Uh, we have a lot of people going through mental health difficulties and mental illness. We have people struggling with disabilities and isolation. And we found that that was kind of just leaking, like seeping into all the different parts of the Discord. So it was suggested that we have a, um, like a, a venting space for people. And so we created the uh, share and care channel in the Discord. And that is something that we talk about quite a lot on stream. When I'm streaming and playing games, we talk about mental health anyway, but we also talk about the share and care channel, which is a space for people to share their concerns, their worries about daily life, uh, to disclose any information that they want about mental health difficulties that they're having, uh, general health problems that they're having, basically anything that could be considered um, a detriment to their mental health in their day-to-day -day life. And it's become a very safe space, I, I feel. <laughs> I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, community, but it's, it's a very beneficial space for people. It's very um, supportive and it's, I, I vent in there myself. I will say I'm having a terrible day. My anxiety is through the roof today for no reason. Can I please see some dog pictures? And everyone comes together to support each other. And that is something that happens almost on a daily basis. Um, and off the back of that, we've obviously had to be quite careful. And um, this is something that a lot of people on Twitch do struggle with. And I've had a lot of conversations with other streamers about this kind of thing, is the separation between being a supportive friend and peer and being a a crutch, a mental health crutch. And it's very difficult to draw that line. And we've had to, uh, well, I've had to implement rules and systems with my moderators to ensure that we don't have anyone feeling uncomfortable, anyone feeling like they're out of their depth. And essentially to make it so that I am not overstepping the mark. I'm not a medical professional. They are not medical professionals and people have to remember that. We need to make sure that no one enters into any dangerous situations. So we've also then found ways to connect people up with uh, 
like helplines and um, online chat rooms and things like that to assist professionally with any uh, mental illness difficulties that people are having. So it's it's become this this really um, this really helpful, supportive, comfortable space for everyone, which is something that I never comprehended could be a benefit of Twitch. And I think a lot of people don't realize that that can actually be a thing. Um, so this kind of leads me on to another similar topic in that we, because we have this share and care channel, because we have these discussions so regularly on Twitch and so regularly during our streams, it's become a series of teaching points that we have within the community. We often have people that will join the stream who are new, and I see this in other people's streams as well, and they will not understand why we have to be careful with certain topics, why we have to discuss mental health, why we have to be open about this kind of thing. And it's allowed for these teaching points where we say like, everyone goes through this kind of stuff. Everyone has some kind of difficulty with um, mental, like mental health and mental illness, whether it's very mild occasional things or whether it is full blown, um, mental health disorders that that everyone has these issues in some capacity and the more we talk about it the more uh the the less taboo the subject is so we discuss it we work through any questions that people have and i am insanely grateful for my community for having this openness there are some people who still will not open up and that's totally fine they're there just for the support that is completely fine. Um, but then there are some who offer that support back to people. It's it's just, I'm so grateful to them for helping me teach others that these things are okay to talk about and teaching people about other issues with, uh, with sexuality and gender and all that kind of thing. I've just seen um, one of my community members in the chat, um, Roxandra, if I, I can put that up. The first time I came into your stream, I mentioned my non binaryness and no one ever gave me any abuse over it, but you told me I was welcome before they got chance to, and that meant a lot. That is the core of my community. That is what we aim for. Um, and I've just seen uh, David say that he views it as a second home. It's that kind of inclusivity and wholesomeness and welcoming attitude that I've tried to uh, foster and nurture within the community so that everyone feels like they can share and they always feel like they are able to talk about it and no one is going to judge them for it and it's something that I see in all the communities that I join in with as well I'm I'm part of as a viewer I'm part of a lot of different Twitch communities and everyone that I follow is very open about mental health struggles and very uh, accepting of people that come into the community and that is incredibly important and Twitch is this really kind of underground platform for that kind of thing that people people don't realize that that is there and people don't realize that this support network is actually available um, so one of the biggest things I think recently that has come out of uh, come out of the Twitch community is I very, very recently moved to the United States. Like as the lockdown was happening, I was moving to the United States. So I got here and I have not been able to see anyone. I've not been able to go out. I've not been able to settle in for lack of a better term. Um, viewing apartments was incredibly difficult. Viewing uh, areas to live was incredibly difficult and my Twitch community has been a godsend. We've had weekly community nights where every Friday afternoon, evening time, uh, we will all get online and we'll all play games together. And this is an initiative that we've started since the lockdown has been in effect so that people can hear other human voices. People can chat, they can engage, they can just listen if they want, they can type, they can play games or not. But it's it's a few hours every week that everyone looks forward to now. I really look forward to it. 
it's my chance to connect with other people that aren't my husband <laughs> or my dog. Like it's it's a time to laugh and let go and remember that things aren't so bad in the world right now. And even when I couldn't stream, when I didn't have all my equipment with me, I was doing streams very similar to this actually, where I was uh, sticking my phone down in front of me and I was just talking with people about how the lockdown was affecting everyone, about worries surrounding the coronavirus and just opening up and kind of massaging that topic to loosen it for everyone and make it feel less like a stress and a worry. So it's, it's difficult to convey just how helpful Twitch can be for people because it's not only games on there anymore. It's now, it's now uh, there's an IRL category, an in real life category where people can do just daily things and people can watch. There's cooking, there's fitness, there's arts and crafts, there's costume making, there's all sorts there. So even if games aren't your cup of tea, there is that entire community. There's, there's all these different pockets of communities and people that are available to chat and to be a part of. And generally the, small, the smaller communities are incredibly welcoming and incredibly uh, homely feeling, let's say. Um, I genuinely do not think that with, if I didn't have my Twitch community, if I didn't have these outlets and this, this regular streaming that I'm doing and these regular chats through the streams, then I would not be as open as I am about mental health online. It's really helped me come to terms with my symptoms, my diagnosis. Um, it's helped me find new coping mechanisms, new breathing techniques, new grounding methods to get through panic attacks, to get through the loss of appetite to feel better about weight loss or weight gain, you know, uh, feel better about my hair falling out. It's, I would never have discussed this two years ago online. I would never have opened up this much or felt comfortable enough to do this kind of thing if it wasn't for the support that I have received through my Twitch community. And I'm insanely grateful for that. They have been there for me and I've tried to be there for them as much as I can because it is a little family and it's adorable. <laughs> so um, I also wanted to talk a little bit more about burnout in the games industry before we get onto any, any comments and questions that people might have. Um, so uh, crunch and burnout is a huge, huge problem in the games industry right now. I will not lie to you on that front. It is something that there has been many exposés on recently, many articles, um, and it's something that the outside world is becoming a lot more aware of because the games industry is this little pocket of people that are worked to the bone to create products that are sold at what I would view to be a too low price for the amount of stress and pressure that is placed on the developers. So many people drop out of the games industry because of burnout and the percentage of men uh, the percentage of women versus men is incredibly high so women face a lot more pressure in the games industry than men do because they have to they feel like they have to be a part of the boys club they feel like they have to prove themselves go above and beyond and as a consequence they burn out really quickly and i've been in three or four different teams now. And luckily, I my most recent one was the best one that I've been in. We were a team of entirely women and we supported each other and backed each other up and helped each other out. And we, we faced everything together. There was none of this trying to prove ourselves. There was none of this us having to work extra hours to seem like we were working hard. Uh, which is very, very common in the games industry. It's something that I used to get scathing looks if I left work at 4.30 when all my tasks were done because so-and-so was staying until seven doing all their work. That should not have to be a thing. That shouldn't be the attitude that people take that if you're doing overtime, you're working hard. It's something that goes on in a lot of studios and isn't really discussed. And 
it's something that burns a lot of people out. And like I say, women are way more susceptible to this than men because women have to prove themselves to prove that they are more valuable or as valuable as the men. Um, which in turn, this working overtime, this working extra hours, this leads to crunching and it leads to burnout. So crunch is a kind of shady side of the industry, let's say. And it is essentially where people are worked to the bone aggressively for long periods of time. We're talking some people up to two and a half, three years where they're working 60 hour weeks and it's not okay. And people need to discuss this more. People need to discuss the impact that crunch has on mental health more. And I've tried to, I've never, luckily I've never had to crunch and I hope I never have to. Um, but it's something that a few of us are trying to discuss more and Twitch is again one of those platforms where it's starting to come out, all these things about crunch where people have left the industry to go and become full-time streamers and go and do more journalism, more um, camera appearances so that they can talk about their experiences. And it's ever so delicate, let's say, um, but Honestly, it's, it's, I'm trying to work out how to put this in the nicest way possible. <laughs> um, it's, it's a touchy side of the industry that we shouldn't be having to deal with. And the more that it's spoken about, the less it will happen, essentially. So a lot of people are turning to Twitch to find this downtime and again, find solace in these communities. And it, it all ties in, it all goes full circle and comes back around. And it's hopefully changing slowly but surely. Um, so I'm going to have a, we have some questions. I know that we have some questions. Um, I'm just gonna pull them up. I will handle the ones that came from Instagram first. We collected a few beforehand so that um, we can just keep things rolling. Um, and the first one is, do you ever struggle with spending too much time online and worry it's detrimental to your mental health? So I have had periods where I have struggled with spending too much time online. I know that social media can be incredibly harmful. It can be, uh, it can have this, this sense of, uh, you see these ideal scenarios that you want to have and they are not real, they are not tangible, they are not obtainable but that's what you see and you surround yourself with that. So you think that that is the norm and it can be incredibly detrimental to mental health, seeing this all the time. Um, with regards to spending time online streaming, I've never had any really negative effects of that. I've never felt like I've been doing it too much, um, but I have taken days where I've not been feeling 100% mentally and I have been feeling anxious and shaky and I've said to my community, look, I'm not in the right position to stream today. And thankfully, I have an incredibly uh, compassionate community. And everyone is super forgiving, let's say, and supportive. And they will say, look, you come back when you're ready. You, you stream when you're feeling OK. You don't have to do it. Um, so on Twitch, no, I've not really had detrimental effects to spending time online but on Twitter Instagram that kind of thing yes 100% um and I now try to limit my social media time because of that because I don't want to be connected to the outside world all the time and I found that it was negatively impacting my headspace um how have you been coping during the pandemic and quarantine well um I think I've been coping how most people have, where I've been trying to engage in as many hobbies as possible and get outside when I can. Um, for me, a big part of staying okay in my head is eating well. So I find that I don't put pressure on myself to 
um, eat healthily. I don't put pressure on myself to be super clean and eat veggies all the time and, you know, try and keep a healthy weight or whatever. I don't weigh myself. I eat pizza when I want to. But as a general rule, I try to have fruit, vegetables, less sugar. You know, I try and stay clean with my eating. So um, that's been a huge part of the quarantine, <laughs> just trying to get fresh vegetables and eat them. <laughs> um, I've been walking my dog a lot. I'm very, very lucky to live right next to a park. I can see I have a lake out my window. Um, I'm very, very lucky with where I live right now. And um, I've been taking my dog out two, three times a day for big, long walks. Streaming has been a huge part of my quarantine. I've been streaming probably more than I should. Um, and I've been playing a lot of games online as well with friends to try and keep in contact with people. And like I say, I've been uh, partaking in these community nights every Friday and it's been great. It's been really, really good. And I've also, thankfully, I've had the house to sort out. As you can see, I'm not unpacked yet. I still have stuff everywhere because I only moved into this place about three weeks ago. Um, so I've been trying to keep busy, essentially, because if I slow down, if I stop, my uh, health then takes a downturn. So I, I try to just keep going, not push myself too hard, but just keep things rolling. Um, have you faced any backlash for being a female gamer in an environment that is male dominated? So um, I'm gonna give you some, some lovely little facts and figures off the back of that, uh, that question. Uh, the games industry right now is about 5% women and 95% men. There is very, very few people in the games industry that identify as non-binary or are comfortable identifying as non-binary. Um, same goes for transgender. Um, and generally, the LGBTQ community is minimal, let's say. Um, I was very, very lucky to work at a company called Ubisoft in my last position, where they are 20% women in the company. So it's still a very small percentage, but the studio that I was in as well was also about 25% women, and we had a lot of female directors. So I was very lucky to have those role models to look up to and those people that I could, I, I knew would sympathize with me. I knew would have that compassion towards being a young woman in the games industry. Um, yes, I have faced a lot of backlash. You have to have a very tough skin being a woman in the games industry because it is not a generally friendly and welcoming environment towards women. That is changing and people like myself who have managed to make it through the first few years of hell <laughs> are trying to improve it for other women that are joining the games industry. So um, because of the hate campaigns, because of the abuse online, because of the weird comments in studios, because of the misogyny, I have multiple times opened myself up to mentoring opportunities to help young women and people who do not identify as male uh, to feel comfortable and confident within the games industry. And so far, so good, fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> there is a few people that have entered into the games industry that I have mentored and it makes me immensely proud to have been a part of that. And my uh, Twitter is always there, my Discord is always there. If anyone wants to talk uh, to me about it, if anyone wants to talk to me about mentoring opportunities and that kind of thing, wants advice, I have an email address for contact as well. So yeah, I try to be as open as I can on that front. Um, what else do we have? How do gaming friends and community compare to in real life friends and community? So I have met most of my close friends online. I do have a lot of social anxiety. I struggle a lot when it comes to meeting new people. I, at events, I have what we call business early. So I do a lot of events for companies, for studios uh, within the games industry. I go to conventions, I go to presentations, panels, whatever. Um, that was my dog. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have a lot of, uh, let's say personality traits that I amplify when I do these kinds of public events where I can be friendly, confident, 
outgoing and bubbly and that is not necessarily me um i can be quite withdrawn normally i can be quite um my dog's trying to escape <laughs> i can be quite uh isolated and i essentially project this other version of myself in real life towards people. Whereas my online friends, I don't have to be like that. My Twitch community don't see me like that because I can be myself. When it's just me talking to a camera like this, I weirdly feel like I can just be myself. Um, I met my husband online. Most of my best friends I met online and I have met them since in person. Uh, but generally I, don't have that many friends that I met in person first. So again, Twitch, online games, despite having this very kind of toxic, um, people having this very toxic view of them, uh, there are these little pockets of goodness in there that are fairly easy to find should you want to do that. Um, what kinds of emotional support have you found through gaming that you weren't finding in real life? So, sirens. Um, as I said before, I find this sense of escapism uh, through games that I find also through reading. I don't really tend to get it when I'm watching movies. I struggle to maintain other hobbies. So uh, fitness is the only one that I've really kept up with. Uh, but things like painting, drawing, um, I did sewing once upon a time. Um, I've never really kind of maintained those. Gaming is something that has been prominent throughout my life. And it's because it provides that sense of calm and relaxation that I don't find in anything else really. Um, to the point where I listen to a lot of gaming soundtracks outside of playing games, like when I'm cooking, uh, if I do decide to do something else, if I'm reading on, on my balcony, um, I'll be playing a gaming soundtrack um, because it kind of transports me back to that peace and quiet that I find within games and that um, that safety that I get from them. So it's something that I haven't really found elsewhere in my life and games might not be that thing for you, but I would highly recommend finding that, that, little, that little thing that helps give you that sense of security and safety and calm. Um, so let's have a look through the comments. Um, what do we have? Lots of people saying hello, hello. Um, so we've got this one. Uh, you said that you try to keep busy for your mental health. Do you also try to work on finding peace in being still? If so, how? So a huge thing for me recently through self-compassion and practicing self-compassion has been meditation. I kind of fell off the yoga wagon <laughs> a little while ago and I've found that just sitting quietly, playing some calming music, sitting, thinking, breathing, whether it's in the sunshine, on grass, on the ground, I tend to try not to do it on, on a chair. I, I tend to try and do it on the floor, but I will just sit and think and breathe. And it's, I don't even know if it would be classed as meditation, um, but I've found that that has really helped me stop and recharge and reset almost because there is a proven um, physical benefit to deep breathing techniques because uh, for those of you that don't know, with panic attacks and anxiety attacks, your body goes into a fight or flight response and the deep breathing helps to reset that fight or flight response and it will reduce the adrenaline, it will reduce those panic chemicals in your brain and in your body and it will reset you to zero again, which is why deep breathing has proven to be such an effective method for helping with panic attacks. So that is my main kind of still peace and quiet <laughs> kind of moment. Um, and also, I have been playing a lovely game called Animal Crossing recently, which conveniently came out just before this pandemic started. And I know a lot of people have been playing it. It's essentially about um, 
quietly running a town and an island and building it up and planting flowers and catching fish and catching butterflies and designing clothes. And it's very calm, very peaceful, very tranquil. And there's also the opportunities to connect with friends on there and you can join each other. And I've had uh, dates with people on there where we've gone fishing together and things. And that is also some of my peace and quiet time right now. Um, what else do we have? Um, let's go with Roberto. What would you like to see happening more often in streaming channels and game studios to take more care of folks' mental health? So I noticed at Ubisoft, this was a thing that was starting to become more prominent. People were being more open about mental health. People were talking about it more in the workplace and people are starting to train as mental health first aiders. So for people who are having a bad day, people are, who are feeling stressed and anxious at work, they can go to these mental health first aiders and they will help them out with having that reset and getting through the day. That is something that I would love to see more in the games industry. I'd love to see more people having the openness to discuss mental health and say, um, I'm having a really crappy day. I don't feel good. Like, I'm gonna take the afternoon off. I was very fortunate to have that with my boss. Um, I was very open with her from the start. I said to her, look, I've just started on antidepressants and anti anxiety medication. I am feeling awful. <laughs> I feel terrible right now. I'm not in a good headspace. And she said to me, thank you for being so open with me. Thank you for trusting me with that information. If you need to work from home, let me know. We can set you up with a laptop that you can you can access everything from home. Um, you can take days off if you need to. Just let me know. I'd rather help you than you try and deal with this on your own. And that attitude has greatly helped with my, I wouldn't even call it a recovery, my journey, let's say, through being accepting of my condition, of my um, my chronic illness and because that's what it is it's not a it took me a long time to realize that it's not just me being crazy it is an illness and it can be treated so I cannot praise my boss enough for that um, she was absolutely fantastic with helping me deal with that and that needs to be more of a thing um, streaming channels I think even something as simple as I've seen people implementing uh love heart color coding systems where if people are having a bad day they can put a certain colored love heart into the chat and it will signal that they are not feeling good and that they need some support or they will be quiet or whatever and that is something i've seen more and more often recently which is fantastic um and just generally just generally being more open i think the more people talk about it the more people have the uh, bravery to speak out about it because it's not an easy topic to discuss. It's very personal. It's very um, close to my core, <laughs> at least. Um, this kind of discussion has to happen more often. Um, let's go with um, David. Do you find it easier to talk about mental health with strangers online compared to friends in real life or is it the other way around? So I um, initially found it much easier to talk online because I'm just shouting into the void right now. <laughs> um, I obviously now know my people in my community, but initially I was like, I don't know you people, I'm just gonna talk. <laughs> And as a consequence, it meant that it was, it's like that first time that you admit that you need help. Saying it initially is so difficult. It's so hard to say, I am not well, please, can you help? That first trip to the doctors, the first call to the therapist, you know, it's, it's the first step is always the hardest. And then after that, I was like, hey, that wasn't so bad. People were quite nice about it. Maybe I should talk about it more. And it's now led to doing Q and A's, it's led to doing mental health streams, it's le led to uh, interviews and podcasts. And you know, like I talk about this fairly openly now and I do so in real life too. The only person that I haven't openly discussed it with is my dad. 
<laughs> but I've spoken to my mom about it, which I never would have dreamed of doing. Um, slight content warning, trigger warning right now regarding uh, self-harm. I'm not gonna go into details. It's just going to come up in this conversation um, and suicidal tendencies as well. Um, so when I was around 17 years old, I was living at home and I was really struggling and it was my first serious, serious depressive period. Um, I was self-harming and I was considering suicide and my mum, I I remember my mum asking me repeatedly, are you okay? What's wrong? Can I help? And it felt oppressive. It felt like I couldn't open up to her it was such a big thing that if I opened that can of worms it was just gonna go everywhere and I wouldn't be able to cope so I stayed quiet and I kicked myself out of that um somehow and I'm grateful that I did but that was 10 years ago now and I only this winter spoke to my mum about my depression for the first time because admitting it to the people that are closest to you that have known you for your entire life is a lot harder than speaking to someone online about it so if you are struggling I would recommend jumping in a chat room talking to strangers just opening up but please please make sure that they're okay with you doing so before you do it I cannot stress that enough either go to a professional for help or say, please can I unload on you? Please can I talk to you about how I'm feeling? Because there's nothing worse than dumping that on someone else if they're not ready to deal with it. Um, what else do we have? Roxandra again. Do you feel that the comparative lack of women in LGBTQ plus characters and games is leading to fewer people in the industry, which leads to less accurate representation and creating a vicious circle? Yes, 100%. So there is very much this attitude that men sell, women won't sell. And as a consequence, women are not main characters. LGBTQ characters are not prominent in, it translates to books, movies, uh, TV shows, everything. And it's, there's now this kind of upsurgence of the people who do identify as LGBTQ are creating these characters it might be subtle it might be a throwaway line of oh yeah she has a girlfriend or something it might it might just be a tiny tiny little thing but it is creeping its way in there slowly and then we're seeing characters um in some of the biggest blockbuster games that are coming out that are gay they are uh transgender they are non-binary and that is huge and i am incredibly proud to be a part of the industry in this time when these things are changing. I'm proud to be a part of helping make those changes and making people more aware of wording, of how to describe different people, of labels and why things can be offensive. And it's in the least arrogant way possible. <laughs> it takes people like me telling others that that certain things are wrong to cause change. It takes people like some of my colleagues from my previous studio saying accessibility matters and sticking up for it when people say, yeah, but it doesn't affect me, so why should I do it? It's not for you, it's for other people. And it's people like that that are really important in the games industry right now. And same goes for streaming. I uh, recently found a... Um, a person who uses the pronouns she, they, and she is non-binary. And she is fantastic and so open. And she, one of the first things that she said to me when I entered her stream was, I cry a lot on stream because we deal with anxiety and depression here and that's okay. You can come and cry with me. And having that kind of instant welcome and like, it's okay to not be okay here is fantastic. Um, Okay, so Dave, how would you approach someone who claims that Twitch isn't a real thing because it's online or that or that they are critical of finding of someone finding a bit of solace in Twitch gaming or online communities? So I think it would honestly, I would honestly say each to their own. 
some people might find uh, solace and calm in gardening. Some people might find it in running. Some people might find it in um, cooking, you know. For some people, that's watching games. They might not have the motor skills to play the games. They might not have the mental capacity to deal with playing the games themselves. They might not uh, have the platforms to be able to do it. And their way through it is watching other people. And they might find that that uh, companionship in the communities and they might find that kind of outlet that they need in these online communities. And you shouldn't judge something based on your own experiences, if it provides comfort to someone else, you can't judge that. You can't tell someone that they're wrong if that is how they are feeling. Um, in the same way that I, I would never judge, I don't even know, I don't even know, something like, I, I have absolutely zero interest in running. I cannot stand it. Um, but I know some people that that is the only way that they can find that mental calm. So, each to their own, honestly. <laughs> um, okay, let's see what else we have. And then we'll take, we'll do two more questions and then we will finish up, I think. Um, what else do we have? Mary Lynn, how do people find you if they've never used Twitch before? So, um, there is a lot of different tagging systems on Twitch. There's a lot of different uh, categories that you can go into. So if you have a particular interest, you can search the categories for that interest. For example, the IRL category will get you everything under the sun. But if you really like watching people apply body paint and makeup and sewing, you can go to the cosplay section and find something uh, through that. Um, there is also the tagging system, which I use on all of my streams. So right now I have the LGBTQ tag on because I am, I'm bisexual. So I do not hide that, but I'm not shouting it from the rooftops, let's say. So I have that tag on to make sure that people who are a part of the LGBTQ community know that they will be welcome in my community. And you can search these various different things. I also turn a lot to social media to find new people. So I will say, I need someone who is playing calm games on a Wednesday afternoon uh, with a small community. I wanna help support smaller streamers. And I will have tons <laughs> of comments from people with links to show me how to find these various people. Um, so just browse Twitch, find something that works for you. It's a bit, I found it's a bit like a therapist. <laughs> you have to find the one that works for you. Not everyone is gonna be a good fit for you. Not every community is gonna be the right community for you. You have to find one that works with your mindset and your level of communication. So yeah. Um, and then we'll go with Ryan again, I think for the last one. It's so important to be willing to advocate for yourself and to advocate for others. How do you encourage people who know that something is wrong but can't find the courage to do something about it? So I have that a lot in my community currently. Um, a lot of people who know that they have anxiety, they know that they are depressed and they don't know how to get help or they don't feel ready to get help. And I have tried to be as supportive as I can by saying that it's okay to not be ready to get help. I suffered for almost a decade before I sought help and it was the best thing I ever did. Like it was getting medical professional help was the best thing that I ever did for my mental health but I had to be ready to accept that. I had to be ready to accept that somebody might tell me that something was seriously wrong with me. I had to deal with all the what ifs. I had to deal with the potential that um, maybe my biggest problem is maybe I am just a bad person. And I had to be ready for someone to tell me that, to go and seek help. I had to be ready to be treated and go through everything and come out the other side and maybe still feel how I did before. And having the courage to seek that help 
is not something that comes overnight. It's not something that you can just say, oh yeah, I'm gonna go and deal with this now. Generally, there will be an inciting incident. There will be something that happens that causes you to say, right, I now need to go and sort this. I'm ready to sort this. And I try to be and encourage others to be the kind of people that will support people through that or support them until they're ready to do that and say, look, it's okay that you're not ready. It's fine if you don't feel comfortable and confident enough to, to seek that help and to engage with that side of things. We're here for you. We're here to talk about issues, but if it, if it gets to the point where it's dangerous, we will encourage you to go and seek professional help. And there are a fair few people who have made big decisions who have started therapy, who've made those calls, who've gone on medication in my community. And I am so proud of them. Honestly, I'm so proud of the journey that they've gone on. And I know how difficult it is. And the fact that they have that bravery to go and do that is a testament to their own strengths, I think. And sometimes it just takes that little bit of encouragement to help them realize that they do have that strength. And we try to foster that within my community. And a lot of Twitch communities do that, honestly. A lot of people do that. So yeah, I'm really proud of you all. <laughs> um, and also you should take pride in yourself if you have gone on a journey to becoming, to getting better, to working through your mental illness and your problems, it's not a small thing to do. Um, so yeah, I guess we should probably finish up here. This has been amazing. Um, thank you all so much to everyone that tuned in. Thank you for all the questions. I'm sorry I couldn't answer them all. Feel free to uh, contact me on social media if you want to talk further. Feel free to tune into future streams. Um, I'm always open to chatting about mental health on my on my video game streams, even if you're just there for the mental health talk, not for the games, by all means, uh, drop by um, and try to find that community that works for you on Twitch. If it's something you've not explored before, go and check it out because it's this whole untapped wealth of wholesomeness <laughs> that people don't realize exists. Um, so I want to say, Thank you as well to Made of Millions for allowing me to have this platform to talk about this kind of thing. And please do check out the other content um, on the Made of Millions website and YouTube channel. There is all sorts on there. Um, doesn't matter what kind of um, what kind of difficulties you're having. I'm sure you'll find something on there for you. It's madeofmillions.com. Um, and I guess I will see you all around. Please do hit me up on social media or on Twitch if you do want to talk more about this kind of thing. And enjoy the rest of your weekend and stay safe during the quarantine. We'll see you all soon. Thanks for dropping by.